Welcome to Grass GIS News and Tutorials. This is my way of sharing with you my understanding and learning of Grass GIS software. I'm using these tutorials to reinforce what I learned and also to help others that might want to learn about the Grass GIS software. This is tutorial number two, understanding Grass GIS data structure, locations, and map sets. Before we start working with Grass GIS, we need to make sure we're familiar how grass data structure. This tutorial will give you an idea of how to use that data. The basic knowledge of coordinate systems and map projections is going to be needed so you can take full advantage of this tutorial. Grass data is stored in what it's called grass base and is often located in a folder you created as part of the installation of the grass GIS software. I showed you how to do that in the previous tutorial. If you haven't review it, go back and take a look so you know what we're talking about on this point. Within the grass data directory, data will be stored and organized by projects in subdirectories called locations. Each location has its own coordinate system, map projection, and all the geographical boundaries that you will need for the project. When we first create a location, Grass will automatically create subdirectories under a map set containing all the data and files required for the project. It will create a special folder called permanent. This folder is where all the data resides and cannot be modified by anybody else other than the person that created the location. Um, you can have multiple users within a location map set but only the one that created this location will have access to edit the actual data within the permanent folder. Um, if you're the only user, then you have access to it. But if you were to share your work with other users, they could create their own maps and projections, change all that, but it will be safe in their user folder. And if they wanted to pour those changes back to your map set, then you'll have to do it manually for them. So that's how the basic structure for Grass GIS data is set up. Everything is set up under the main folder called Grass Data, which we created during the installation of the Grass GIS software. Under that Grass Data, we have locations. Each location you can also refer it as a project, most people do. Each location or project will have a map set. That map set holds all the data that you will need for your project. You, have, you can have multiple users within a map set or project location, but only the one that created the map set will have access to modify that data. Users can have their own data, but it will be stored in the user directory. I hope this gives you an idea of why I read. In review, Grass GIS is organized into locations. Each location has its own coordinate system, map projection, and any other geographical boundaries that it might require for the project. Uh, they're all located into a map set. Each location have a map set. It could have multiple map sets, each one containing its own coordinate system or map projections that it might require for that map set within the location or project. Map sets will hold the location data for that project. Everything that you have uh, required for that project will be located within the map set of that location. And also remember that only the creator of that map set locations map set will have access to edit that data. You can have multiple users, but only the one that creates the, the location project will have access to modify or edit that data. Anybody else can share it, but only those people will be able to modify that data. I hope this brief explanation of the Grass GIS data structure gives me a better understanding of how the data is structured within the software if you want to learn more, I put up links on the tutorial notes so you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. 
and uh, if this is enough for you then we're gonna go ahead and continue with tutorial number three we're gonna go ahead and open a project or location so we can start doing some basic commands and get you used to use the CrassGIS software.